Hey folks, this is Nod, and we are mucking around in X-Plane. Alright, today I would like to talk to you guys about one of my favorite add-ons for uh, X-Plane, Little Nav Map. I've been using this for like ever, and um, it's a, a sort of a flight planning software. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, it's a flight planning software. It's also flight following. You can kind of see uh, your, it's like I can see the AI craft, like this one taking off right in front of me, apparently. Yep, there he goes. You can see him on the map here. Yeah, that's very cool for, uh, you, you know, you can, you can, for situational awareness, it can't be beat. It really is amazing. And it's got an excellent flight planner and all sorts of stuff like that, and, and it goes into all sorts of detail. Okay, what I want to talk to you guys today about is aircraft performance and uh, how that affects Little NavMap. Um, little NavMap allows you to uh, create a performance profile for each of your aircraft. I mean, I'm flying the Cessna 172 right now, um, and I want to create a, a profile for that. So there's the, one seven, here's the Cessna 172 uh, Skyhawk profile. Now, what you can do is you can go in and, uh, let's see, where is it? Um, you got this uh, fearfully complicated um, aircraft, uh, edit aircraft performance table, and it's got it's got all the, um, you know, the fuel usage and the, uh, the uh, airspeed that you normally fly during different phases of your flight, like the, uh, the climb, the cruise, and the descent. And you know you have to come up with all these variables and all the, enter all this information. I mean, you could go on like Wikipedia and look up Cessna 172 and try to bang in some of these values, but you know there's going to be there's a million different 172s out there, all performing slightly differently, and um, you know, and it's not going to be quite the same as it is in the simulator. So what little nav map did was um, they created this wonderful thing um, under the current performance tab here. You can actually um, you can collect performance data on your aircraft as you fly it, so it actually creates you know real-time data, and it averages it all out and creates a profile based on the way you fly your aircraft, which is, in my opinion, infinitely more useful than downloading something. Speaking of that, you can actually download these profiles off of um, off the little NavMap uh, website. Uh, they got ones for prepared and FSX. I'm using X-Plane, and uh, you know, there's a, people have uploaded some uh, different profiles. There is one for the 172. I gave it a try, and um, yeah, it was missing some data here and there, and uh, it, it, um, it just didn't really equate to the way I fly my 172. So I'm not saying that I'm doing it. He, he was doing it wrong, or I'm doing it right, but um, yeah, it was just different than the way I fly it. So what I really like about this is, is about I'm, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to record a flight real quick, and um, it's going to record the data for me, and uh, I'll create a new profile for myself. And I can do this for all my X-Plane aircraft, you know, and create custom profiles so that when I'm doing my flight planning in a little nav map, it'll have all the data for the airplane that I'm actually intending to fly, which is fantastic. So let's get that going. Okay, I'm going to rearrange my desktop here a little bit so that I can show you guys this without covering most of the screen here. This is, a lot of people don't realize a little nav map is infinitely uh, customizable. You can move things around any way you want. It's very cool. Alright, so let's stick that there. Move this over here. So you guys can see my ugly mug and still see this stuff. So we got the map. Um, what's important actually for this is the is also this, um, this sort of a ground profile thing it shows here. It shows the... Uh, I, I created a flight plan. I'm flying from Igor Sikorsky uh, Airport. KBDR in Bridgeport, Connecticut, and I'm flying up to Danbury Airport just for a little, it's a little test flight, it's only like a, what is it, it's only 20 nautical miles. You really should do a longer flight if you want to get good average data, but I'm just a demo, so I'm just going to, you see it shows the top of climb and the top of descent here, and uh, this is what tells the little nav map what phase of the flight you're in, so initially I'll be in, well, actually initially I'm going to be in, it, it even computes the uh, startup and the taxiing out to the uh, actual uh, runway and it, it, it counts for how much fuel you use just futzing around on the ground doing your uh, pre-flights and all that stuff which is good so there's that phase then it'll use this uh, you know until you get to the uh, top of climb it'll use this as the uh, it'll realize you're in the uh, the um, the climbing phase and it'll record telemetry for that and then when you get up to the top it'll put you in cruise mode and it'll start adding sections to this as you as we go so um, 
Anyway, let's get this thing started. I'm not going to like go through all that stuff with you guys, but uh, all right. by the magic of editing, we are started. Okay. So I've got my uh, engine running, and I've just done my pre-flight and all that nonsense. And uh, well, I haven't actually, but um, uh, you'll notice it's um, it's actually added a new section up here now. It's it's putting the fuel, and this is actually going to record all the futzing around time, as they said. Uh, so we need to get going. So now we're going to taxi out to the uh, to the um, runway. I'm going to take off from runway one one. So I'm not going to. Uh, you watch that, but uh, suffice it to say, we're gonna it's gonna record my taxiing so it'll see how much fuel I used from here to there. So let's get going. Okay, done my taxiing, did my quick run up, and uh, it says I've used three pounds of a, uh, one gallon of a uh, AV gas to, just to do all that futzing around. Alright, so let's get in the air next um, and start our flight. We're taking off from 1 1. Now it's important that I like try to do this smoothly and, and uh, you know, and, and the way I would normally do it. Well, actually, I don't normally fly smoothly at all, so what am I talking about? I'm just going to fly the way I would normally fly my plane, so. Runway. I'm not going to back taxi, this is plenty long enough for me. But as soon as I take off, it should switch modes and, and realize I'm starting to climb now. Alright, let's throttle up and uh, I'll get in the air. So I'm going to do a rather fairly aggressive turnaround here. This um, this flight is not really long enough to be a, a very good um, averaging of your uh, of your flight data. You should really do a nice long hop, like I don't know, at least 50 miles, I figure. Uh, this one's only 20. You know, if not 100 or so. Just to, you know, the, the longer you spend doing this, the uh, the better your average will be. Although if you do a lot of short hop flights, then maybe that's what you want to record. I don't know, but. Uh, um, so I'm going to spin around here and I'm going to try to be as consistent as possible here. In fact, we're going to use the autopilot in a minute. But you will see, I have now it's now noticed that I'm in the air and I'm climbing. So it's now recording climb telemetry, which is brilliant. So let's get that around. I want to come around here and get aligned with my purple line here. I've got my uh, heading bug already set. Get on course first. There's Igor Sikorsky Airport down there. Uh, Igor Sikorsky kind of worked on the original Sikorsky helicopter. Actually, the Sikorsky helicopter factory is not far from here. I do not fly helicopters in X Plane though, although I have flown a little bit of them. But more of a uh, just sort of a fixed wing and uh, gliders is more my thing, but uh, don't mind that. That's just my Bad potentiometers on my yoke. I really need to replace those. Get a little glitchy. But I would like to maintain about 500 feet up as a climb rate. Um, that's my goal, which I'm not doing a very good job of right now. But uh, we're going to use the autopilot anyway. So, all right, so it's uh, almost at the close enough. All right, so let's engage the autopilot. Heading and vertical speed, we are going to set to plus five. So, a 500 feet climb rate. All right, 
right, so it's, it's actually saying my vertical speed is about 529. All right, so I'm also, okay, so I've, I've got full mixture on, and I'm full throttle right now. Not quite at red line, but this is how I might generally like climb with the Cessna. Just beat the heck out of it, what do I care? It's a rental. So I'm going to be approaching the TOC, the top of climb soon, and we will enter the uh, cruise mode of this, the cru cruise part of the flight. And the way Little Nav Map knows you're in these different phases is using the flight plan. So you do need to set a flight plan and kind of follow it. So I set my, uh, I was going to set, I set, it, set it to 2,000 feet just for this demo because it's a short flight and I don't want to spend all day climbing. Um, so once I arrive at 2,000 feet, I should, uh, it should notice that I'm now in, in cruise mode. So I'm going to keep an eye on the altimeter here and we're going to level out at 2,000. Obviously, you got to set your altimeter correctly for that to work. Which I screwed up with the last time I tried to record this flight, and I have to do it again because I got my altimeter all wrong. But uh, <laughs> this is the second attempt at this video. Ah, I love recording videos over and over. Hopefully, things will go better this time. All right, we're coming up on 2000. Approaching uh, TOC. altitude button once we arrive at 2000 and level off and it should be put us in climb mode right about now okay all right so I'm also going to lean out my mixture a bit and I'm going to back up the throttle so we are now in cruise mode Source gas temperatures close enough. All right, so it's now reporting that I'm. Uh, let's see, the there's the climb data, so I should have cruise. Yep. Yeah, okay. Now it's recording cruise data. Very good. So I'm going a little faster, going another five knots faster than I was in climb, and my uh, fuel flow has dropped down to 10 gallons per hour. Now this will change as you as you fly. Um, as, as I said, it's constantly averaging all this stuff. So we will uh, continue on, and um, in just a few miles we will be at the uh, time to descend. So it's going to average, a lot, uh, you know, keep averaging the uh, cruise speed, um, cruise telemetry, you know, as we're proceeding down here. Um, okay, it's not doing vertical speed, of course, because we're in cruise. That makes sense. So it's just it's just recording the uh, speed and the fuel flow during this section. All right, let's fast forward here a little bit. Uh, spend all day watching this. Okay, so we're coming up on a, a descent point here, a top of descent. So it's saying seven miles out from the airport, and we are 7.7 .7 to go. So in about half a mile, we will uh, start our descent. Almost there. 7.4, 7.3. You don't have to be this accurate, but. It's nice to have the tools. All right, so we're going to start descending now. So we will change our vertical speed, drop down to uh, 500 down, and we're going to come off our throttle so we don't go crazy fast. All right, we are descending. 500 feet per minute. Airspeed looks pretty good. Throttle's backed off. And the fuel flow is like dropped way down. So let's see if it's noticed we're descending. It has. Okay. So we now have a true airspeed of a. Uh, seems like I could go a little bit. So I could probably descend a little faster than this. But uh, 500 feet per minute, you're going down. And we are only using 4 gallons per hour as we were descending. So during the climb, we were using 13 gallons. During cruise, we're very efficient at eight, and uh, during our descent, we're at four gallons. So, I mean, these these figures will vary on and based on how you have your aircraft set up. Of course, you know if you're uh, if you're really beating on the motor as you're traveling, and you know the altitude will change things too. You can set up different profiles for uh, different altitudes, for example. Like if you're going to cruise at 2,000 feet, this would be a good profile for that. If you're going to cruise at 15,000 feet, you might set up a different profile. 
but we are descending towards Danbury. Already good. I'm going to level out at a. Uh, what's the altitude here? Uh, 450, so like 500, so 1500 feet I will probably level out. Uh, apparently I've gone past that, okay. <laughs> All right, well, anyway, that's my descent data, so um, let's get this thing on the ground. And, um, and then we will actually add this data that it's collected to, the, uh, to my uh, profile. Bit, get back up into patent altitude, although, eh, it'll work out. Yeah, I'm always just really bad at flying when I'm recording these videos, and excuses, excuses, but, you know, it is a lot going on in your head when you're doing this stuff, and... Uh, adding the whole recording the video and trying to be interesting and intelligent at the same time um, usually ends up with a complete fail on either the intelligence or the flying part. <laughs> I can't seem to do both at the same time. Alright, let's make a downwind here. Alright, let's just do a 180 here and get this thing on the ground. It's not going to be pretty, but I haven't actually seen the runway yet. I can see it on a little nav map though, which is nice. I know it's over there somewhere. thing over here. Yeah, not a very good landing. Oh geez, look at this, I'm way off. <laughs> we can get her on the ground. This should really be a go around, but I'm going to try to salvage it, which we should never do. lights here, huh? Okay. Just as well, because they would all be like saying, you're going to die now. It's like we're fine. Come on, make me look good. Uh. <laughs> It'll do. Okay, we are on the ground. It's still alive. Miraculously. <clears throat> Let's try to take this turn off here. Brakes. Very good. <clears throat> Alright, let's go park her over here and we shall uh, look at our data we've just collected. Very good. <clears throat> Plug, 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 plug. Alright, turn all this stuff off. Okay. What we're interested in here is the uh, is our data though. So let's have a look. <clears throat> Alright, so now we have an option to uh, merge the recorded performance into the current. So I'm gonna hit that. And up comes this magical window here. Excuse me. <coughs> Up comes this magical window here that allows you to um, uh, basically choose which data you want to actually uh, copy, which completely replaces your previous. Obviously, I've, I've recorded a, I've recorded a couple of uh, data sets into this profile I have on here, so I can either copy completely copy over the data, which just takes the current uh, the last pro uh, last collection data and uses that, or I can merge it, which does an averaging of the things. So I'm going to use the merge fe feature. I'm just going to hit merge. And I'm going to hit OK. Actually, let's have a look at the differences here. So, so last time I flew, um, my climb speed was 100. I mean, this time it was 110, and the previous was a, my average was 108. So usually I climb a little slower. It looks like my cruise speed was uh, this time was a little slower. Uh, yeah, I wasn't on, I wasn't quite as throttled up as I normally am. So that's a little lower. So you see, this this data it, it changes every time you fly because it's in, you know it's a very organic thing is flying. It's very difficult to fly like a robot unless you're using autopilot for the entire flight. But uh, um, so that's why I like the merge feature is it averages all my flights together and ends up with a sort of a vague look of you know a vaguely accurate sort of interpretation of the way I fly. So I'm gonna hit OK, add that data to my uh, my profile then. So um, I can go back into fuel report. 
and you can edit this data at any time you want. Um, and there's a few other things it doesn't record, like um, you can change the aircraft name and the required runway length. It doesn't record that, doesn't know about that, so you can put that in. I don't know if this figure's right, I got it off Wikipedia for the required runway. Um, uh, I think there's a couple of other things like the um, the res rever uh, reserve fuel and um, extra fuel and contingency fuel. These are things you have to put in yourself. I've just made up some numbers here. Otherwise, it puts a big red line in your um, profile and, and yells at you for not having this information. But it will record all this other information. It's very difficult to uh, figure out otherwise. So, uh, yeah, and you can put a description in here if you want to put that in. But um, yes, you can make up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to load up my... Uh, you know, i got lots of other airplanes in here I can do this with. Now I can go fly a flight and make a profile for each one of these aircraft. Uh, not going to work with my gliders because I don't think a little rav map, there's no fuel usage, so that's not going to work with my gliders. But um, certainly all these other airplanes, um, yes, I can, uh, I can now make a profile for. So next time I plan a flight with a little nav map, it's going to be absolutely brilliant. It'll actually know where I'm going. Okay, well, here we go. Let's put it back the way I like it. I like a big map. I don't need this quite as big. Yeah, you can you can muck around with all these columns and stuff, but uh, that's that's a video for another tutorial. It's another tutorial for another video. Yeah. Anyway, let's get the idea. Moved it. Should. Yeah, I've broken everything. Okay. All right. Well, uh, there we go. We've done that. Um, yeah, it's a little nav map. Uh, put a link in the comments about where to get that. I mean, a link in the uh, description where you can go get that. And if you like my videos, please give me a thumbs up and um, you know subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. And I will make more of these videos. All right. Thanks for watching. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.